Okay, this is my first red bit. When my husband and I decided to move to Nashville for his job, I really had no idea where my career was headed. And while I was so excited to have found this perfect opportunity with Red Pepper, it wasn't really until after Pepper Palooza in January that I understood I was going to be working with people who were going to really change me, who were going to make me a better person. And while I felt so lucky to have found such a progressive, forward-thinking, and supportive community, I mean, the fact that we even had an event like Pepper Palooza, as opposed to the PowerPoint-heavy national sales meetings of my past, made me feel proud and inspired. And one concept that really stuck out to me was the idea of a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. Chris Kenny gave an amazing presentation to kick off Pepper Palooza on this topic, and shared how we really needed to adopt the right mindset so that we could create a culture of doing remarkable work for ourselves and our clients. Now, I easily considered myself as someone who already had a growth mindset. I mean, I'm a high ID. I'm outgoing, I'm adventurous, I'm ready to go skydiving. I love trying new foods. I mean, totally growth mindset material, right? But when thinking about the definition of a growth mindset, I, the understanding that our abilities and our intelligence can be developed, and it's not just what we're born with, I started to reflect a little more. I mean, did I even have a growth mindset? How could I be sure? So I started doing some research. Carol Dweck, psychology professor, psychology professor at Stanford University and author of Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, says there are misconceptions about what it means to have a growth mindset. People often confuse it with being flexible or open-minded or having a positive outlook, qualities they believe they've simply always had. Carol and her colleagues call this a false growth mindset. They say everyone is actually a mixture of fixed and growth mindsets. This mixture continuously evolves with experience. A pure growth mindset doesn't even exist, which we have to acknowledge in order to attain the benefits we seek. So the fact that I just already assumed I had a growth mindset was already a red flag. And then the fact that I didn't understand the true definition was yet another. So then I decided I would reread my desk profile for additional insight and to get a better understanding of my current mindset. But I noticed a few things. Some of my motiv motivators are initiating colorful projects and creating enthusiasm and momentum. However, some of my stressors are working steadily towards long-term goals and moderating my pace. And I realized that some of my stressors could really conflict with me achieving a growth mindset. Learning with the intent to grow takes time. It doesn't happen instantaneously. How much time was I spending on just the day-to-day -day task, uh, tasks initiating these colorful projects? And how much time was I spending learning on how to improve and grow my long-term goals? And suddenly, my life was flashing before me, starting with embarrassing tantrums on the swim deck because I cannot learn to dive off the diving board into the deep end. P.S. I still can't. <laughs> and most recently, with my failed hobby attempts of knitting and calligraphy. But I was just naturally bad at those things. I mean, I did well at other sports, and I'm not naturally artistic. But I began to stress, because this did not sound like growth mindset behavior. So I decided to keep researching. And I learned from educator Jackie Gerstein that when you're using a fixed mindset, you may think that your abilities and qualities, for instance, athleticism, aptitude and test taking, and musicianship, are things that are simply static and unchanging traits, things that you're born with or without. Individuals with a growth mindset, however, may come to realize that natural talent or intelligence is just the starting line, a baseline from which real progress begins. These people know that anyone can do or learn anything through dedication and hard work. Now, I certainly don't consider myself an expert in anything, and I, of course, believe in hard work and dedication. I really started to think about how I was defining myself both personally and professionally, and I had to come to terms with it. Um, I had a fixed mindset, but how could I change this? And of course the D in me is like, fix it now. So I started by listening to this amazing Ted talk by Edward Briseño called how to get better at the things that you care about. And he says the key to improvement is by deliberately alternating between two zones, the learning zone and the performance zone. And he explains that the most successful people spend more time in the learning zone rather than the performance zone. The goal of the learning zone is to improve. It's where you can concentrate on the things you haven't mastered yet. 
and expect mistakes. However, for someone like myself and potentially other fellow IDs out there uh, who like to get things done ASAP, this can be an uncomfortable place to start. But some additional research I found shows that the state of relative comfort created a, steady, a steady level of performance. And in order to maximize performance, we need to be in a state of relative anxiety, a space where our stress levels are slightly higher than normal. And the space is called optimal anxiety, and it's just outside of our comfort zone. And it can be hard to want to put yourself in an intentional state of anxiety. But once we think we're good enough, just adequate, We've, that means we've stopped spending time in the learning zone. And the more time we spend learning, the more time we'll be improving. However, the performance zone is also important. The goal of the performance zone is to do the absolute best that we can. It's where we can concentrate on the things that we've mastered and apply those learnings to help minimize mistakes. And who better to learn from than Queen Bee, Beyonce? You know when Beyonce is on stage, she is in the zone. She's in the performance zone but after each performance, she immediately goes back into the learning zone. She watches a recording from each night's performance to identify opportunities to improve for herself, her dancers, and her camera team. The next morning, everyone receives pages of notes on how to improve and can work on the next, sorry, can work on, right there, uh, can work on the next day uh, uh, before, the improvement, uh, before the next performance on where to improve. It's just a constant and perfect cycle between each zone. So how could I find this balance? How could I learn to learn? But the good news is, is that the journey's already begun. In the past six months that I've been at Red Pepper, it's already changed me in a profound way, and I've made great strides to achieving a growth mindset. I'm a Whole30 survivor. I've attended, <laughs> I've attended an inversion yoga class, uh, and I'm listening to TED Talks on the regular on my walks to work. And my NYC self probably would have never made time for things like this and certainly wouldn't have qualified these activities as something that would benefit me in my career. But allowing myself to stretch, to deliberately be uncomfortable, not just hustle but grow, has benefited me in countless aspects of my life. And while so many of you are responsible for helping me achieve a growth mindset, I challenge you to really think about how much time you're spending in the learning zone. Do you allow yourself to get uncomfortable to a point of optimal anxiety every day? Here are some tactics to make sure that you can stay in the learning zone. First, believe that you can. Stop making excuses in your personal and professional life that certain skills are just something you were or weren't born with. It's something that you continuously evolve and develop. And second, be intentional. Make learning a deliberate practice. My girl Elizabeth sets time on her calendar every week for intentional growth, and Erin is pioneering the 100-day project. Whatever you're looking to get better at, carve out that time to learn. And finally, be like Beyonce. I mean, for so many reasons, but at minimum, when you're in the performance zone, a pitch or presentation with clients, an alignment share, whatever it is, don't just rush off to the next thing on your list. We already understand the value of pink gold and plus deltas, so take time to ref after a project to reflect to see where you can improve and stretch. And with that being said, I welcome your feedback from my first red bit share. Please find me after alignment or DM me and share honest feedback on how I can get better. Please help me continue to achieve a growth mindset. Thank you. Woo!